here by taking a quarterback, Jalen Hurts, in the second round at a time when we did not think they needed one. They had Carson Wentz. Now, here we are a year later, Mel, and the Eagles have given off every sign that they're not interested in a quarterback because they want to build around Carson, oh, excuse me, around Jalen Hurts, and now they trade up to 10. Who do you believe they're coming up to get? I'm looking at Devontae Smith. It's just because of the Giants in the division, figure, boy, that would be a nice addition for Daniel Jones to get a Devontae Smith along with Kenny Galladay. I'm the Eagles. I went down from 6 to 12, right? I took myself out entirely of getting one of the elite receivers, which is what they desperately needed. Remember, they didn't take Justin Jefferson last year because Jalen Rager hasn't worked out great yet. Hopefully, Rager improves in year two. If I'm going up from 12 to 10 and I'm going ahead of the Giants, I got to get Devontae Smith. To me, he's the third best player in this draft. Yeah, it, it makes total sense that they need more weaponry on the outside. They need someone who really has produced at a high level, at the college level, a guy who is a three-position player yeah. at, the, at the college level and the pro level, meaning he can play the X, the Z, the E in the slot. Someone who Jalen Hurts, look, if you want to see if Jalen Hurts can be a franchise quarterback, you better have some more weapons than what they have right now. Put his former teammate with him. That's right. So let's just see if this is what they were planning on doing here. Because look, the corner position, the top two guys have been taken now. That's a position that maybe they could have addressed. Maybe they could have found some value there. I don't see it being a defensive lineman. I just don't really see any other value being on the board right now unless they were going to take the quarterback, which I don't see that happening either. So Devontae Smith just kind of smacks you right in the face right there. Well, and just to add to that, the owner came out, Jeffrey Lurie, simply said, hey, we're all in on Jalen Hurst this year. We're going to support him. So this pick, picking a wide receiver makes sense. But if they didn't go wide receiver, the Eagles linebackers are terrible. They might have a chance to get the best, I think it's the best defensive player in this draft. Michael Mike, Parsons. And, and Michael Parsons. Yeah, that, that's the if, one. That, if, if, you know, it's not receiver. Right, right. right. And let's face it, Michael Parsons would have played this year and equaled what he did in 2019. Right. And with that 4.39 speed at 246 yes. pounds, you would have been talking top five to Correct. seven. Which would be interesting considering the fact that I don't believe in Jeffrey Lurie's tenure as far as owning the football team. They've ever drafted a linebacker in the first round. And it shows. Ever. Yes. It, and, I, and, just, and I just shows. think from a team building uh, philosophical standpoint they don't believe in investing in that position in that way now i'm not saying i agree right i'm saying that that has never been their mo this is very much so an offensive driven football yeah, there, team. there are two players that could help the giants who is their rival right there in the division it would be Devonte smith and michael park exactly there's one thing I didn't think we would see. It would be the Eagles and the Cowboys making a trade. I'm getting the details on the trade from our producer, Brian Ryder, right now. Go ahead, Rides. Uh, the details on the trade are as follows. Oh, here we go. It's the 10th overall pick. The Cowboys get a third-round pick this year. So that will be tomorrow night. Dallas will pick up a three in this deal. And Lewis, and we take a look at some of the other moves. So, again, the Eagles... This pick has been pretty much everywhere. They started at six. They traded down to 12 with the Dolphins, and now they move back up to 10. That's Howie Roseman making a lot of moves around the draft, Lewis, and that's an organization you know very well. Yeah, look, they very much so are a team that is very draft-centric in terms of moving, and they like to, and in that vein, they like to move up and down the draft board. They like to try and find value. They like to create value for themselves in future years by obtaining more picks, which is what the original emphasis was to move down. Now they see a player maybe that they want, they want to take him away from the division rival, so let's move back up. We have some ammo to do it now. Let's move back up, get a guy if we really like him, help out our quarterback, help us score points, help us put get back in contention in the NFC overall as far as getting back to the Super Bowl. And when you have situations like this, guys, you get a Rashawn Slater slipping down just a bit. And that is a word you could use because he was right there with Penn A. Sewell. So they can't all go in the top ten. Some really good players that were projected to go high, guys, always drop into the middle of the first. That's happening again this year. Well, I, I think the expectation, and certainly at least according to many of the mock drafts, was that we'd, we'd wait a little longer for the corners. The two corners that we've seen go off the board so far, the J.C. Horn and uh, and, and Patrick Sertan, both outstanding players. But that, I think, is what has yeah, Dallas was so made a hot nice spot to move exactly. on for Patrick Sertan, but he's gone, and now Dallas trades out. All right, so again, the Eagles were at 6, then at 12. Now they're at 10, and a trade with their arch rival Dallas Cowboys. The Eagle fan is getting out of the honorary chair. Roger Goodell is getting set to announce the pick. The Giants are waiting next. The Cowboys are down at 12, so it is a run through the NFC East, and we're about to find out who it is the Eagles wanted to move up and get tonight. Here comes Roger Goodell with the 10th pick. The Dallas Cowboys have traded the 10th pick to the Philadelphia Eagles. With the 10th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. 
So both the Alabama receivers have gone. That's three Bama players that have been drafted in the top 10 tonight. And Desmond Howard across the street is unquestionably applauding for his Heisman Trophy winning brother as Devontae Smith is the first receiver since Des to win the Heisman. And you see that moment backstage there with Mac Jones. It's only the fourth receiver ever to win the award. Lewis, let's talk about Devontae Smith. Look, this guy, he is just a big play waiting to happen. And he can do it in a myriad of ways. He can do it on the short passing, in the short passing game as far as catching the ball and running. He can run the intermediate routes. He can beat you deep down the field. Look, I really compared him to one of his to one of his alumni brethren in Calvin Ridley in terms of how he wins at the line of scrimmage and how he can win down the field. Okay, it's a quick release. You see him right here. You see the quick jet stab inside and then just sprint outside and then just beat you down the field on the nine ball and then just take off and, and complete the catch here. Calvin Ridley, you see here, quick stab inside and then just take off on the nine route. It looks exactly the same. It's the exact same route. And then just finish the catch down the field and then finish with the touchdown. I mean, that's the kind of thing that they want in Philadelphia. Winning on the deep ball, even when it's contested, when it's a tight throw, when maybe the ball's a little bit underthrown. If it's really not on target, I can go up and get it. I can complete the catch in all environments. Calvin really does the exact same thing down the field. Quick inside release, and then just sprint up the, up the alley. And you see here, the defensive back falling down at his feet. You still maintain your concentration and you just win. That's the kind of thing that this wide receiver room needs. Because just remember this, as a group, the Philadelphia Eagles wide receivers had the third fewest receiving yards in the NFL last year. That is not going to fly with this ownership group, with this general manager, and with this head coach. That's not how they want to win. They needed to make this pick. And you know, Lewis, all that's been talked about with this receiver, all during the whole process, with how much does he weigh? How big is he? Let me say this. Size is not a skill, Mel. Size isn't a skill. And when you talk about a skill position player like Devontae Smith, a guy that Lewis talked about elegantly, can do everything at the receiver position. Look at the skill level. He did it at the highest level. He did it against the best DPs in the country in the SEC. So I don't want to hear anything about his size. He's big enough, he can play enough, and he can make any play in the NFL that he made in college. And right now he's with Susie. Snickers brings us down to the stage. Susie? Now seven Alabama wide receivers taken in the first round since 2011. Devontae, what are you most proud of in your journey to get to this moment? Um, just that all my hard work is paying off. I mean, being around those guys that I played with, I mean, they taught me a lot. And just us being held to a high standard, just having that standard in that room and everybody that's coming behind us is going to be held to the same standard. Hey, just to prove how daunting this draft process can be, I can't imagine how many times you were asked about size and all of this. But what do you want Eagles fans to know about the way you play the game? That every day you're going to get the best out of me, no matter what the circumstance is, how things are going, you always get my best. And now reunited with Jalen Hurts. Congratulations. Thank you. Susie, thank you. A wonderful moment for Devontae Smith. No question about it.